Hi, so I'm making this video to let anyone suffering from what I've been suffering from to know that you're not alone and that uh, despite the symptoms being scary um, and sometimes undiagnosed or unexplained um, that it's not the end of the road and there are things that we can do to improve our quality of life. I'm talking about um, mitral valve prolapse and mitral valve regurgitation, otherwise known as a heart murmur. Um, I recently found out through an echocardiogram that I have mitral valve prolapse um, as well as mitral valve regurgitation. They kind of go hand in hand as I understand it. And uh, I have been experiencing preventricular contractions or PVCs, which is a type of heart palpitation over the course of the past uh, five weeks. And a halter monitor test showed that there were upwards of 9,000 to 10,000 of those beats per day. Um, I experienced a number of very scary symptoms along with those um, PVCs. Anxiety, um, head rush when I stand up, um, you know, um, just general concern about, uh, about my health and my well-being, um, shortness of breath, a little bit of chain, uh, chest pain, um, uh, definitely feel not as energetic, a little bit more lethargic in the gym. Um, and there is not a lot of information out on the internet about what to do if you are an athlete who wants to continue to train um, but is dealing with these symptoms. And um, I don't have the answers. I, I wish I did. Um, there aren't a lot of answers, to be honest with you, from what I've experienced, what I've been researching, but I hope to find those answers. Um, it, there is a little bit of um, comfort in knowing that now I know I'm not crazy and that my symptoms are actually caused by an abnormality. Um, in worst case scenario, that abnormality can be fixed with surgery. But I'm hoping that I find other ways, other avenues to help um, alleviate the symptoms and help make the prolapse better. So let me give you a little background um, just because I think it, it is helpful for other people who might be experiencing the same symptoms who are sort of in the same situation that I am. Um, I'm 37 years old. I'm an athlete. I've been um, training, CrossFit training and training in the gym um, all my life, pretty much my adult life since I was about 15 years old. Um, I'm, I eat well, I get enough sleep, um, I'm generally healthy, I have a heart rate that's generally in the 50s at rest, and uh, I have no other cardiac um, issues either myself or in my family and I uh, don't have high blood pressure, don't have any other cardiac, um, cardiovascular disease or any other cardiac um, complications. <clears throat> the first episode um, I experienced with my heart was, well actually I should say, I always had symptoms for my adult life, entire adult life, since I was maybe 19 or 20 I've had these strange dizzy spells that were unexplained. I went to the doctor, took, had numerous tests done, and there wasn't any explanation um, other than I was anxious. And I don't, I'm not an anxious person by nature, so that anxiety was coming from somewhere, manifesting from somewhere within, at least I thought, but the doctors that I saw were saying, you know, um, it's just in your head, which was frustrating. If any of you have gotten that diagnosis, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, that started, like I said, when I was 19 or 20, and in 2005, um, I had an, an episode of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation feels like uh, a flopping fish in your chest. 
your heart has no rhythm, no discernible rhythm, and it's beating all over the place. It was extremely scary. I was admitted to the ER. Within a few hours, my heart on its own converted back to a normal sinus rhythm, and I was released. Um, I followed up with a, a cardiologist who I've continued to follow up with today, till today, to, till recently, and uh, I had a bunch of tests done, um, which basically said, you had arrhythmia, it's a benign condition, it happens in athletes, go about your daily business, don't worry about it. So I did, um, a few years later in 2012, I had another episode um, of atrial fibrillation and then um, converted back into normal sinus rhythm on my own, didn't have to get admitted to the hospital. It's very scary, if any of you have ever had that, um, I really feel for you because it's it's not fun at all, especially when a doctor tells you to go home. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, you feel like it's the end, really. Um, that was not diagnosed as connected with my mitral valve regurgitation at the time, although I did have it. It was very, very minimal. Some people notice it more frequently or more uh, strongly than others. And some people can even identify the slightest um, amount of regurgitation. Um, <clears throat> they all get symptoms uh, like um, getting lightheaded when you stand up too quickly, um, that an anxious um, kind of welling up in your chest or feeling like there's butterflies in your chest, um, sometimes shortness of breath, tightness of the chest. Um, these are all possible symptoms of mitral valve regurgitation or prolapse. Um, in my case, uh, it was undiagnosed at the time. Um, it was so minimal that it could be barely heard on a stethoscope and I was told that everybody has heart murmurs, no one has 100% valve efficiency and um, there's nothing to be concerned of. But at the time I was experiencing symptoms that were very um, that are in, align in alignment with mitral valve prolapse um, syndrome, MVPS. Um, so flash forward till uh, recently, like I, I think I had said five weeks ago, I started having those PVCs. I went to the doctor, they did all the same amount, the same tests they normally do. Lo and behold, my echo um, came back with uh, enlarged left ventricle um, enlarged left atrium and moderate um, regurgitation of the mitral valve and also the prolapse, which that's all new. Um, my my um, ejection fraction has also reduced as well, which is a sign of the, um, the continuous preventricular beats. PBCs can definitely be caused by the mitral valve regurgitation and or the prolapse. It doesn't, they don't go hand in hand. Sometimes people don't get PVCs. I happen to express PVCs as one of my symptoms and that predicates all of the other things, anxiety and so forth. Um, where I'm hoping to get is I want to find a balance between my workout, my lifestyle and um, doing what I need to do to maintain healthy balance of life as well as I want to um, find out if there's any way to heal or reduce the amount of um, prolapse. And one of the things I'm going to look into is can reduced exercise reduce or change the structure of the heart? Has the heart structure changed because of or enlarged in part because of my exercise regimen? So I'm going to seek out other things, hiking, running. Um, less in the gym work and more um, outside of the gym and see if that helps. I want to continue this conversation. I want this dialogue to be um, helpful as much as possible. So I'll continue to post these uh, videos as I learn more. And please, please comment and include um, uh, your, your symptoms and what you're feeling. And if there's anything that you've done that's helped. If you've been in my situation, an athlete who's been diagnosed with um, mitral valve regurgitation or prolapse, Let's share and, and let's find out, uh, you know, together how we can um, lead healthy lives and continue to be athletes and not feel like we have to, you know, sit in bed the rest of our lives. 
So thank you very much. Um, I hope this has brought some comfort to any of you who are feeling these symptoms. Um, that's, you know, that's all I can hope for. I, I, I hope that we are able to um, find these solutions uh, together. So thank you.